In this video, we will talk about what's under the ice in Antarctica. So before starting this video, please subscribe to this channel for our future updates. So let's get started. It has been revealed that two fresh lakes have been discovered, buried deep beneath the Antarctic ice sheet. They are part of a massive network of ever-changing lakes, hidden beneath 1.2 to 2.5 miles, 2 to 4 kilometers of ice, on the southernmost continent. They are among the most beautiful places on the planet. These lakes fill and repeatedly drain in enigmatic cycles that may impact the speed at which the ice sheet moves and the route and location of meltwater that reaches the Southern Ocean. This flow, in turn, can alter the currents in the Southern Ocean and, as a result, the global circulation of the ocean. The lakes are located at the bottom of the ice sheet, where the ice sheet meets the rocky Antarctic continent and is surrounded by mountains. Unlike in Greenland, where meltwater seeps from the ice surface through crevasses and holes known as moulins, Antarctica's lakes emerge from beneath the ice, most likely due to pressure, friction, and maybe geothermal heat, as shown in the image above. Until the launch of NASA's ICESat spacecraft in 2003, this water system mainly remained hidden from sight. The ICESat spacecraft utilized lasers to measure the elevation of Antarctic ice, which was then used to create maps. Helen Amanda Fricker, a glaciologist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, connected elevation changes detected by ICESat and the dynamics of the lakes deep beneath the ice surface back in 2007. As the lakes drain and replenish, the ice on the water's surface rises and falls, providing clues about what is going on below. Fricker's discovery opened the door to the prospect of following the lake system over some time. On the other hand, I sat only collected data for six years. Cryosat 2, the European Space Agency's identical satellite, began collecting similar data in 2010, but over a greater area and with less precision than Cryosat 1. In September 2018, NASA deployed a new satellite, ISAT-2, which collects the highest precision data available to date on the Earth's climate. After using ISAT, putting on ISAT-2 is analogous to putting on your glasses. Because the data has such remarkable precision, we can begin to map out the lake boundaries on the water's surface. The frozen continent of Antarctica may be devoid of features from above, but beneath the surface of the ice, lies a strange and intricate world, which scientists believe could be crucial in comprehending the consequences of climate change. It is commonly known that the Antarctic ice sheet has been losing mass at an alarming rate. According to NASA, the glaciers that make up the ice sheet are melting six times quicker than 40 years ago because of rising ocean temperatures. Scientists at NASA Estimate that Antarctica is losing 252 gigatons of ice per year, equivalent to nearly three and a half Olympic swimming pools per second. If all of Antarctica's ice were to melt, global sea levels would increase by 200 feet, overwhelming every coastal city and wiping entire countries off the face of the Earth, according to the National Snow and Ice Data Center. Changing the sea level by even a tiny amount would be catastrophic. An increase in sea level of five feet would be sufficient to completely cover a region the size of Denmark, for example. Millions of people would lose their houses in the United States, particularly in coastal areas such as New York City and Miami, where infrastructure is incredibly near the water's edge. It takes thousands of years for the 1.3 mile thick ice sheet built up in Antarctica over the eons to cover the entire southernmost continent. However, for about 100 million years, the continent remained above the South Pole, preventing it from freezing. A much warmer climate accompanied by lush rainforests, comparable to those found in New Zealand, where dinosaurs may be found, feeding among the plentiful foliage. When the Eocene and Oligocene epochs collided around 34 million years ago, 
A significant shift in climate occurred at the transitional point between them. The balmy greenhouse temperature became substantially cooler, resulting in the formation of an ice house at the poles that has persisted to the present day. Antarctica is currently separated into three regions, East Antarctica, West Antarctica, and the Antarctic Peninsula, with each area containing a distinct topography beneath the continent's surface. Among the ice-covered mountains of the Antarctic Peninsula, for example, is a spine of mountains that extends northwestward from the continent's interior. East Antarctica, the most extensive section, contains both plains and mountains, with some of the latter being flatter than others. The Gambursev Mountain Range, which stretches for 750 miles and has peaked as high as 11,200 feet, is roughly the same area as the European Alps and is totally covered by ice, with more than 2,000 feet of snow on top. It lies almost entirely below sea level in West Antarctica, which is the lowest point on the planet. Because of the weight of the ice, which was much thicker during that period, it forced down on the region's bedrock, resulting in the formation of an ocean bowl under the area. Because West Antarctica acts a landmass, it is more prone to melting than the rest of the continent because it lacks the mountain ridges that help maintain the glaciers in the east. Satellite data obtained between 1996 and 2006 revealed that the thinning of ice shelves, floating sheets of ice that link to a continent, in East Antarctica, remained stagnant, while the pace of melting in West Antarctica increased thrice. For the first time, NASA has developed the most precise map of the continent. The map, dubbed Bed Machine Antarctica, was created by combining ice movement measurements, seismic data, and radar images. It revealed previously unknown topographical features, such as the broad ridges that protect the glaciers flowing across the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, which divide the East and West Antarctica and the continent in half. The machine also discovered the world's deepest land canyon, which is 11,000 feet below sea level and located beneath Denman Glacier in East Antarctica. That is significantly deeper than the Dead Sea, which is 1,419 feet below sea level and is the lowest exposed section of land. A map is an essential tool for scientists because it will allow them to estimate precisely which portions of ice are most at risk of sliding into the ocean in the future decades and millennia and which sections of ice may be more stable than previously anticipated. Despite substantial advancements in mapping subglacial geology, Significant regions of Antarctica remain unresolved, and crucial spatial features are lacking in many areas. Understanding what is beneath Antarctica's ice continues to be critical in predicting the ice movements that are being accelerated by a warming climate. For a long time, some geologists believe that beneath the frigid bulk lay nothing more than a frozen ectonic block a relatively uniform mass that distinguished it from the chaotic geology found on other continents. The discovery that East Antarctica is actually a graveyard of continental fragments has been made by experts. They have developed magnificent 3D maps of the tectonic underworld of the southernmost continent and discovered that the ice has been concealing the ruins of an ancient supercontinent's dramatic devastation for thousands of years. Only a few frontiers left in the world can still be described as undiscovered. The land beneath Antarctica's ice sheets is one of these terra incognita, or unknown territory. Under miles of ice lies a fascinating world of canyons, streams, and lakes that are only just beginning to be fully explored and documented in detail. How is it possible for water to exist under such a massive amount of ice? that it does not completely freeze. It all comes down to pressure. When a significant amount of ice is pressed on water, it can remain liquid at temperatures below the usual freezing point. What's more, the massive mass of ice acts as effective insulation, shielding the bed from the bitterly low temperatures of the air above. 
Ice travels over bedrock, creating friction that can cause the ice sheet's underside to melt, and this friction creates liquid water. The liquid water is produced by heat from the Earth's interior and friction generated by the ice flowing over the bedrock. This water drains into the subglacial lake basins, which eventually drain into the Pacific Ocean. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and hit that subscribe button before going. Thanks for watching. See you next time.